If you don't know these three tricks, you are missing the power of Codex. In this video, I'll be showing you how to fully leverage the power of Codex by utilizing all the functionalities of Codex in your terminal, in your IDEs, and even on the cloud. So Codex CLI is just, you know, when you use a Codex in your terminal, just like with cloud code. But OpenAI also provide Codex extension, which we can use in your IDE like VS Code or Cursor. And finally, in its website, chatgpt.com, you can also use Codex on a cloud server. First, let's talk about Codex CLI. I think it's probably the most common version of Codex that people are using, especially for those who are uh, switching from uh, cloud code to Codex. I think Codex CLI is a great starting point. So for context, all of the content in this video is based on the documentation for developers uh, provided by OpenAI. And as you know that Codex is an open source project, so you can also check out their official uh, GitHub repo for more information. Now back to Codex CLI. Uh, first of all, we're going to learn about, you know, like uh, its configuration, how you set up its uh, config.toml file. And then uh, I'll be talking about, you know, you know, how you initiate uh, Codex inside of your project and, you know, the role of the agents.md file in uh, using Codex. Finally, I'll talk about, you know, some uh, common techniques that people are familiar in Cloud Code, which is, you know, creating custom Slack commands to make your workflow much faster. Now let's move on to the configuration. So the first thing that we have to learn about Codex configuration is sandbox and approval. So this is probably the most confusing concept that Codex beginners are uh, struggling with. So how are sandbox and approval different from each other? So think of sandbox as, you know, like constraints or the like the limitations that you are putting on your agent or your Codex. And approval is your decision to allow or disallow your agent to do a certain task or use a certain tool. Uh, the act of asking permission is approval and the constraint or the bigger circle here is the sandbox. So when you look at the official documentation of Codex for sandbox and approvals, it can be a little bit overwhelming because, you know, they have a lot of options and, you know, most of the time you wouldn't care about these options. So on the screen right here, I'll give you the sandbox and approval configuration table. So this is going to make your life much easier when using Codex. You don't have to worry too much about this complicated configuration. Most of the time you would have your sandbox as uh, workspace right because, you know, when you code with agents, you want your agent to change your files, create new files and the approval option would be on request. You know, you want to make sure that when agent tries to change any of your code, it will ask for your permission. So it is the default value for a sandbox and approval, but sometimes you want to be extremely safe. You would have the uh, sandbox says read only. And you also have your approval as on request because you know, you want your agent when it, it read any file, it will ask for your permission. But be careful with this option when really dangerous changes to your machine, especially when uh, you also have your approval as never, it will never ask for your permission. It will do things autonomously, which is very dangerous. Again, you don't have to worry too much about all the options. Most of the time you would have your sandbox and workspace right and uh, approval as on request, uh, which is the most common use case with cloud code, with cursor or whatever coding agents out there in the market. And to set your sandbox and approval options, it's also very simple. Uh, they are available as flags when you start your codex. As you can see here, when I start my codex with a sandbox and workspace right and the approval is on request. I can check uh, that with the slash command uh, slash status. And you can see that the approval is on request and the sandbox workspace right, which is exactly what I said. But setting approval and sandbox every time you start Codex can be a little bit inefficient. A better way to set these configs is inside of the config.toml file. So in this file, you can just set the approval and sandbox options for your uh, agent. Right here, I can uh, start my codex again and hit uh, slash status. I can see that it has used the approval and sandbox option inside of our config file. You can even take a step further by specifying different profiles for your approval and sandbox option. As you can see here, I have a specific profile from my uh, approval and sandbox option. I can use that when I start my codex. So I hit slash status and you can see that yeah, sandbox is read only and my 
approval is never. Talking a little bit more about configuration on the official GitHub repo of Codex, it has a pretty detailed documentation for how you can set up the config.toml file uh, for your Codex. You know, you can uh, set up the model providers or you can set up all of the MCB servers that are available to your Codex. For example, I can uh, head over to, you know, myover.dev and choose the Codex version. I just need to copy this configuration, add it inside of the uh, config.toml file. Now, when I start my Codex again, you can see that Myover MCB has been added. Again, for more information about configuration, please check out this documentation because it has full detail about how you can uh, set up your Codex. And remember, this is an open source project. So maybe if you want to make some tweaks for your own needs, you can always clone this Red Bull and make changes that are suitable for you guys. Okay, we talk about configuration. Let's move on to initialization. So when you start using Codex inside of your project for the first time, the first thing that you want to do is use this slash command, which is uh, slash init. What it's going to do is it's going to read through your entire code base and it's going to make a, a markdown file named agents.md, which comprises all of the main information about your code base. But a great thing about agents.md is that it is adopted by many agent providers. But again, agents.md or cloud.md, they serve the same purpose, which is the memory system for uh, agents. Okay, it's done now. As you can see that, you know, uh, the agents.md file has some fundamental information about my project. So again, I'm working on my open source project Cypher. So it contains some main information about my project structure, the main two folders of the project, some of the PNBM uh, commands in the project, and the commit and PR guidelines in our project. So very fundamental information. It's not going to great detail because, you know, it's going to take hundreds of lines for that. So Codex is going to just, you know, uh, list all of the most important information in agents.md. Similar to cloud code, Codex also support slash commands. So think of slash commands as just, you know, prompts, you know, for your uh, very common tasks. You know, maybe you want to fix a bug, you want to implement a new feature, you don't want to spend too much time prompting for your agent. So you want to make some sort of a prompt template for your agents. So whenever you want your agents to fix a bug or implement a new feature, you just need to use these slash commands to initiate your agents on these tasks. And Codex is very simple. In the .codex folder in your root directory, uh, you're going to uh, create a new folder named prompt. As you can see here inside of the prompt folder, I have two marked out files. Again, slash commands are just prompts. We use them because we don't want to repeatedly prompt your agents to do very common tasks like fixing bugs or implementing features. Uh, we have these templates for your agents uh, to follow every single time we initiate these tasks. And to use these slash commands is very simple. For example, I'm trying to fix a bug that one user has posted on our uh, GitHub. And we can use this uh, prompt template for fixing bug by hitting a slash prompt initialize bug and paste in the link to the GitHub issue. So again, I don't have to do too much prompting uh, for this because you know uh, Codex has already seen my prompt template and is doing what is required in this template for fixing the GitHub issue. So we just finished talking about Codex CLI and I know it's a lot to take in, but let's move on to another version of Codex, which is Codex extension. So to be honest, Codex extension is the same thing as Codex CLI, but it has a different user interface. What I mean by that, let me show you. So I am using VS Code and I had just installed Codex extension. When I click on it, we has a very similar user interface like with uh, GitHub Copilot or Cursor. And you can see that we have all the history of our previous chats. Again, as I said earlier, Codex extension and Codex CLI are literally the same thing, but with just different user interfaces. Maybe you are familiar with Copilot or Cursor. You might think that using Codex extension is easier because you know it has better UI. It has you know all the buttons that you can uh, adjust your configuration instead of using just you know slash commands and you know interacting in a terminal. So if you are a terminal guy, you want to do all things in a terminal. Codex CLI is your choice. If you're not a hardcore user, you might think that Codex extension has a better user interface. So just keep using it.
about a performance and about model underlying, they are literally the same thing. You can see that we can adjust the settings in a terminal file, or we can add new MCP servers also in a terminal file. So again, they are the same thing, codec CLI and codec extension. We also have different modes for our agent, you know, just chat mode or agent mode. And we can also adjust the model for our chat. So that's codex extension. But there is one unique feature with codex extension uh, that is, you know, the ability to communicate with your codex on the cloud. And it is the last version of codex that I'm going to introduce in this video. So when you enter ChatGPT website, on the left-hand side, you can see that uh, there is an option for codex. But remember that you got to be at least on a plus plan to have this feature. So when you click on it, uh, the display for Codex Cloud will appear. And as you can see that it looks very similar to a JATGBT, but there are a few differences. As you can see that we can choose the project that you're working on. And you can also choose the branch that you're uh, working on a feature or a bug. And I can start chatting with it like what I do in my local. So what it's going to do is that it's going to spin a new task here. Um, so I can click on it and you can see it is starting the container. And what is even more interesting about this is that, you know, when I come back to my codex extension, there is a new task running on the cloud and it's also synced up to my local. And you can see that there is a, you know, a cloud symbol to indicate that this task is run on the server, not in my local. Yeah, codex has responded to my request. I know it's a little bit weird. Like, why do I have to wait like almost two minutes for this simple query. Uh, but again, this is just for illustration. Most of the time, we would like to run really big, really uh, complicated tasks in the cloud, not just like a simple query like here. As you can see here, I can also click on like my uh, request and my local section looks the same as in the cloud. So why do we need Codex Cloud when I can do all of the tasks in my local? So the answer is pretty simple. It's all about collaboration because, you know, when you're working on a big project, you're not just working alone. You're working with a lot of team members and you want the communication to be strong between your team. And Codec does just that and it does it really well because, you know, maybe you're working on your local and other team members working on the cloud and Codex will allow you to, you know, apply all the changes on the cloud to your local. Maybe you're a code reviewer or maybe you want to add more features, add more uh, implementations to the work of your team members. So let me give Codex CLI a more practical test. So currently I am asking it to, you know, resolve a GitHub issue in our project. So just imagine I am your team member, I am working on my fix, and you are like a code reviewer who is working in local local, and I can also observe what is happening in the cloud. And later when this fix has been implemented, I can pull the changes on the cloud to my local to review whether the fix is working. It's pretty simple, it just added one more line in the Docker ignore file, and I can apply the changes to my local machine. You know, so when I click changes, the changes has been applied, or maybe in the cloud section, there are new changes. I can also reapply the change to get the latest update. So again, the power of Codex Cloud is its ability to enhance your collaboration between team members. And collaboration or communication is an important part of context engineering. Like when you're working on a project, you're not just working with your coding agents, you work with humans. And communication is the most important tool when working with humans. And the ability to observe all the tasks related to your project is really powerful because you know, you're always in control. You always have the latest updates of what other people are working on. The final component of Codex ecosystem is code review. So Codex is able to write code, run tests, and finally review the code generated by other agents or other uh, team members. So as you can see here on the cloud, there is a option for, for APR. So what it does is that it's going to look through all the changes in the section and make a PR in my repo. So when I come back to my GitHub repo, I can see that there is a new pull request for uh, my GitHub issue. And I just tell uh, Codex to review the code for myself. So Codex has just done reviewing my code and it said that there is no major issue with the implementation that we just had. So I think it is safe now that we will merge our PR into the main branch. So this is the entire workflow with Codex Cloud. You know, you can run tasks on the server and you can review the changes in your local through the Codex extension. And on GitHub, you can even tell Codex to review your PRs. So it is a very high level introduction to Codex. I think it is a great tool. And if you can make good use of that, I think your agentic coding experience would be much better. It's not going to 10x your performance like what people usually say, but it will actually make your coding experience with AI much better.
Kodak has just evolved from just a terminal-based coding agent to a full development toolkit for engineers and developers. If you find this video helpful, please also check out this video where we talk about cloud code context engineering. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.